Hi, my name is Jack, and this is a seizure warning because this video contains some flashing lights throughout. There's a square on the screen right now, and if at any point you pause the video, it will disappear. The reason this happens is because you don't see an image of a square, but instead you see the difference between the last and current image, which then reveals a square to you. Also, it's actually a cube. This is a first-person walking simulator that I made in Godot, and there's an itch.io link in the description so that you can go and play it. Chris Long has some great videos where he talks about and shows off what you can do with the effect, and I definitely would recommend watching them. I'll link them in the description. Godot 4.3 added these new things called compositor effects, and they let you use GLSL to write shaders directly for the viewport. And all that means is that adding effects like these to your games becomes extremely easy. I put a link to a GitHub repo that has the compositor effect in the description, so if you want to add it to any of your projects, you can do that. The left side of the screen is what the camera sees, and the right side of the screen is what the player sees. If we zoom in on a single pixel, it'll be a bit easier to understand what's going on. The noise shader only updates if the camera can see something, and you'll notice the pixel on the left is entirely black, so the noise shader pixel on the right will not update. Let's now take a look at a different pixel. The noise shader pixel is now changing colors, and you'll notice that if the pixel on the left is brighter, the noise shader will change faster. Both of these pixels are represented by a value between 0 and 1. Every single frame, we take the value of the camera, multiply it by some speed value, and then add it to the noise shader value. Also, if the value on the right goes above 1, it resets back to 0. The number on the left represents the brightness of the camera's pixel, with 0 being black and 1 being white. On the right, the number sort of cycles through all of the different colors. If we increase the amount of colors we can show, it'll be a bit easier to see. Notice how it cycles between being black and then white, and then black again. Think of it like this. If there are three colors any pixel of the noise can be, we can organize those into four different bins on this number line. To get the color of the pixel, we put our value on the line. This operation is done for every single pixel on the screen, and is what creates this effect. Adding this shader to your game is pretty easy. This GitHub repo has all of the code and all you need to do is get this noise shader add-on into your project folder. And you can either clone the repository, you can download the zip file with the code and extract it, or you can, I'm probably gonna make it in the asset store so you can get it from there too. Here I have the noise shader folder, and one thing you have to make sure of is that you have the rendering method set to forward plus, or it won't work. So, I'll go ahead and make a scene, add a camera, and I'll add a cube, there we go. Then I'll move the camera to look at the cube. Alright, it's sweet. Now I'll set up the environment so that there's no sky, and then I'll add the compositor. So then the, we need to add a compositor effect. We'll add the post-process noise compositor effect. And here we can adjust our parameters if we want to. So I'll just lower this value. And I'll also set the material of this cube. I'll also want to randomize the noise by default. And let's see how it looks. You'll notice that the pixels are really small, and I'll explain how to fix that in a bit. This is a little demo that I made. It's in the GitHub repository if you want to check it out. There's a few things that you can mess around with, and you'll notice that I combine this regular rendering with the uh, noise rendering. The way I've done this is that there's two different visual layers. There's one for regular rendering, 
and then there's one for the noise. And inside of the player, there's a camera for the noise and a camera for just the regular rendering. And the regular one goes above the noise one. The noise is rendered in a viewport, which is in a viewport container, and this allows you to change the size of the pixels. So if I lower the stretch shrink value, you'll see the pixels will be a lot smaller. And if I increase the value, you'll see they're a lot bigger. Thank you for watching. If you want to use this effect in any of your own projects, feel free, it's completely open source and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.